Good day people, welcome back to my YouTube channel Elliot Wave Principle. My name is Shaheen, I'm your host and we are going to analyze gold and silver and we'll also try to look at dollar index basket currencies as well. Uh, in, let me see if I have... Uh, yeah, I have ripple chart in front of me as well, so we'll, we'll talk about that too. Let's have a look what's actually happening here. Okay, yeah, we can definitely talk about it. Let's get going. First of all, uh, for the people who are interested in silver, in buying silver for long term, I have uh, I have great news for them. And uh, the news is that, of course, the very, very good buying opportunity is expected to be arriving. Gold as well. I'm going to discuss gold and silver too. So as per my own cycle analysis, I did some cycle analysis. I realized in that cycle analysis that although most of the time gold and silver move together, but when they reach extremes, it looks like the cycle for silver finishes a little early as compared to uh, the cycle of uh, of gold or the extreme bottom or extreme top of gold. And we have seen that in uh, 2011 and I went back there as well and we have seen some examples of that happening too. So I'm expecting and I'm expecting that we are uh, probably going to see a similar behavior uh, a similar behavior in gold and silver once again I'm expecting that when this time price of gold goes down let's have a look where is it we'll discuss this chart as well if you are interested so this is the gold chart so I'm expecting that when the price of the uh, the gold goes down in in wave 3 at that moment silver will also go down uh, in uh, in this particular wave there is quite a possibility that we might see strong sell-off from over here Targets actually may go to five dollars. I'm not kidding. I know that you are very shocked, and I myself I am right from this reading. But we'll uh, discuss more about it. First of all, let's go discuss gold, and then we'll just come back to silver. Now I've drawn some uh, GAN angles using this methodology. I want you to uh, answer where exactly we are going, where important support and resistances are. So. Put put me in the terms, put put me in a comment section if you are interested in looking at GAN analysis. Lots of people are not into GAN analysis, so we can discuss this. And here is gold chart. All right. So as per our analysis, we have completed a five wave structure. After five wave structure, we're expecting wave A, wave B, and wave C. There's an alternate count that maybe the correction completed right over here. In that case, wave one and two finishes right over here. And this is small degree wave one, small degree two, another small degree wave one and small degree wave two. I'm unable to consider it wave three. The reasons that I discussed in one of my previous uh, one of my previous uh, mm, videos as well so we are not going to discuss that as wave 3 for reasons I discussed in one of my previous analysis as well so I'm considering it as the best I can consider it as wave 1 2 uh, a stronger wave 1 uh, and the wave 2 if this is wave 1 then this it means a total different wave structure is happening uh, but we're keeping both the things in mind since the structure is so large about 10 years time and uh, that's why we have decided to inspect this analysis on its own and on a daily time frame I was able to figure out that this channel the support line is very very important and we were able to figure out even be before prices were right over in this region re returning so I mentioned this trend line and so far it has been very very helpful so I consider hold this as an expanding diagonal wave 1 I've considered this as wave 2 uh, when prices were right over here, we were very, very delighted that we are going to go carry on. But unfortunately, we still have, looks like we are seeing correction. In previous wave I, uh, analysis, I stated there is a possibility that we might actually go up. But it looks like that we, and I stated there is a possibility that we might be truncated. For last whole week, we have seen side wave price action. There's not much price action in gold. I believe that we probably have completed. Once again, I believe that we probably there is a high likely of correction being completed and I'm expecting the prices to go on from right over here. If you are thinking that this is a little too short of wave C, you can consider it as wave A, B and C and wave 1 and a smaller wave 2 as well. Both things are actually good enough. And I think if you consider it as wave 1 and wave 2, this helps much better because we are seeing wave A, wave B and wave C a special... Mm, 
zigzag pattern and it's pretty common pattern. The only issue is that so far we have been moving up and down and I believe that we are gonna see further price movement downward. What's expecting now? What what I am seeing right now from over here is that wave three, as if you are um, an analytician or you're well aware of it, that wave three is very strong price movement. I'm st in initially I was expecting that the prices would come off, jump over here, or in a jump over here. But this price action has made me change the analysis once again, and Anal not in the analysis, the actual price path you can say. And now I'm expecting the prices would go all the way down back to 1336, 1340 area, 1350 area, or we have also another top right over here. Once prices reach there, and I'm expecting a jump to around 1440-ish area, 1415-ish area, and a stronger price movement, uh, not stronger, we can't say right now, a price movement downward. So I'm expecting that when prices of the gold reach out around 1340 area, 1330 area, <coughs> that time we would see bottom occurring in silver now so the gold for analysis is complete now the reason I'm expecting I'm pretty sure lots of you guys are gonna get angry over this <laughs> the reason I'm expecting that we are gonna see strong price movement downward is because normally the investors which are professional investors millionaires billionaires they normally buy up at a 50% drop if something drops below at a 50%, uh, if price is heading right over there, it drops 50%, so they will buy at a 50%. That means 50% is very, very strong indication of support occurring. It's a common behavior of prices to jump off a 50%, and this is one of the important um, correction replacement, displacement or replacement, what's that called? I f forgot the word as well. So anyway, this is one of the most important ratios as per WDGAN analysis, as per Fibonacci analysis as well. So right now, if you look at the price behavior, we have seen the drop of the price silver, and we have seen jump exactly coming at a 50%, and we have seen double bottom occurring there as well. So we are seeing a similar behavior. We are seeing weakness uh, in in uh, silver already. Silver wasn't able to push all the way up as gold did. So this is definitely indicating there is a strength uh, in bearish trend. That means that could actually take it back, way back to five six dollars. There's a very strong possibility. If you haven't bought silver before, I would ask you to hold on your order and wait for another three four months, and then we'll probably be able to see much better prices by the end of the year. So this price strength once goes down, the problem with the giving price target is that we are not sure how much the fear level would be in the future. The trend is definitely strongly down bearish. We were able to use some WDGAN analysis which I forecasted in my previous videos. We drew some angles and we saw very good support coming in. So I, once again I'm still bearish on, on the price of uh, uh, silver. If you are interested in catching small time um, support or small, I think this would be a reasonable uh, price target, uh, support level which is just beyond 62.5 of the 100% that we have dropped right from the top. So this is a pretty good level to put a stop loss and please keep uh, money management rules in mind and be really uh, expecting that the strong prices can a strong price movement can occur in the price of silver. So let's have a look at at euro. <laughs> Here is the thing now. Before I wanted to, uh, I can give you all the analysis. I'm expecting this behavior. Let me delete that. And I'm expecting this behavior right over here. So if you look at the price behavior and right over in this in this price range, how do you expect all these squiggles, right? So if a strong price movement expected downward, this is what I'm expecting. It can actually be mm, a lot, a lot time taking. There's quite a possibility that we will see uh, some price behavior coming down and then going up and then coming down as well. There's a huge possibility for that. Reason is because it's been almost uh, four or five years and we have not been able to create a new top. So right now the market in Euro is quite indecisive and that's when the prices go up and down. So as far as the 
uh, near term behavior is concerned, uh, my bias stays bearish towards the euro. Uh, exactly time, uh, exactly where should put your stop loss on a small time frame. I cannot help you with this one. The reason is because there is quite a possibility. Like for example, look at this one, right from this bottom to all over this one. And when you analyze a, a swing like this one, where do you decide? Let's say prices are right over here. Let's say prices are right over here. I'm trying to make a double top. So what it is that it won't come back down? That right now, if you see a bearish, uh, bearish trading setup, that would be really, really good. For example, if you can see right now, is that the prices are coming down already, and if you can see a uh, a pull up in that way it would be a very good entry point all right so us on a very small time frame 15 minute 20 minute uh, or an hour uh, I am right now it, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of <laughs> small analysis and I did not go in the detail of euro as well I'm strongly a gold and silver uh, trader and uh, both are indicating that we are going to see bearish outlook, a bearish price movement in in the price of euro as well. Also, if you look at the chart, we were able to we were not able to see an extreme a top beyond that top. Plus, we are able to see double top occurring in that regard. So this is very very healthy for the bearish price movement. So this is an important price level, and uh, let's draw another. So we want the prices to fall below right over here and create a double, uh, a, a confirmation for us for the trend. This is ideally we want the prices to come back down. As you guys can see, prices move up and down. They do not actually move in a straight line. So keep that in mind. Uh, as far as this uh, analysis itself is going, is clearly bearish. We are bearish in euro. We are actually bearish in all dollar index currencies. So I believe that there is a possibility is that we might see a pullback in in uh, in Canadian dollar and then continue on. Once again, at this point, there is no tool that I have will actually tell me that this is, keeps on going and going. Uh, the monthly outlook is definitely definitely bullish for the chart, which would mean that Canadian dollar would be becoming weaker and weaker as compared to U.S. dollar. So, if you want to wait for some uh, buy setups, why not? Wait for some buy setups, and if prices fall back below, this will be a very, very good entry point for uh, for the long bullish move on the chart. That means the Canadian dollar would be becoming weaker because this is an upside down chart. Okay, USD CAD. Let's have a look at British pound. Uh, it did move. This is the problem. Now, in last week, I forecasted that there is a possibility that we can see prices going up. It did not happen. But it did happen to go down. We were expecting the downward analysis. That's what I'm saying. Is that there is good possibility when you are actually figuring a trend on this level. There's a good possibility to wait for the pullbacks and go for the trade. Simple as that. So we had a good pullback right over here. Could we actually see a double uh, double bottom forming I do not think so right now if you look at this once again analysis is extremely extremely hard all we can do is a draw a trend line and wait for the prices to come back all right uh, I'm very big fan of Elliott wave analysis if I give you pure Elliott wave analysis it will become so strong that you won't be able to uh, you won't be able to trade I studied and I actually uh, studies and went to different analysts, Elliott Wave International, I, I believe. Ah, oh, this is terrible. I should not. Anyway, the point here is that whenever someone tells me that it's a buy, it could go up or down, how how I'm supposed to trade that? I have been studying Elliott Wave analysis from six, seven years. I do understand the concept of Elli alternate wave, and the concept behind that is that okay, maybe you can give us uh, indication that the trend is strong in one direction and then you are not actually sure which pattern is actually happening. Could it be a flat correction or could actually be a single zigzag and ended it right over there. 
So when a single zigzag happens, A, B, C, at that point you are not sure whether it's going to come back and co make a form of a flat correction. So that's alternate labeling. And I completely understand there are people that are uh, elliticians, they are very good elliticians, and they can actually tell you which, uh, which way the larger trend is. So if you look at it on a weekly time frame, we can clearly see that we again the prices weren't able to create a new top beyond this top and we have also seen the double top that we have actually seen in Joro as well that means that we are clearly uh, bearish on the chart and we are, are more focused stays downward if you want to go right over here why not go ahead but keep in mind you have to put your stop loss right over here because there's a good possibility that we have seen wave A, wave B and wave C that will be our alternate count our main count is wave 1, wave 2, a further wave 1 and 2. So that's what if you want to if you want to take it in that regard. So that's your trading decision that you want to make. Let's have a look at uh, XPR. Now I indicated that we have seen some sort of a similar behavior uh, that we have seen in the price of gold. Gold have seen much deeper corrections and I'm expecting a similar behavior. As far as the larger time frame analysis is concerned, I'm still bearish on cryptocurrency. I do believe that we have seen a probably end of a cycle and then it's going to take a good couple of years or at least a year or so before we can actually reach the bottom. So I am bearish. I'm just waiting for the prices to, uh, to come back and I'm right now not a buyer around these levels. I'm, if you are interested in Bitcoin, I'm bearish. I've clearly indicated so I'm bearish on uh, on the price of gold and I mean on the prices of Ripple and on Ethereum and on Bitcoin. So that's it. I hopefully uh, there'll be uh, end of our analysis once again. If you uh, any of you are interested in actually seeing WD gain analysis where is that? So this is monthly time frame analysis which I have done. Uh, it has uh, been really helpful for me if uh, some of you guys want to see uh, the chart and make sense of it why not go ahead thank you once again have a good one and bye bye